Hey, how's it going everybody? It's JT here from the BitBlock, and as many of you know, we had a pretty fantastic Animal Crossing New Horizons Direct last Thursday, and of course, with it, we got a lot of new information. So I thought it was time to sit back and come up with 101 new facts about Animal Crossing New Horizons. So, let's not waste any time, let's get into it. Number one, KK Slider can be seen just barely in the top left corner here. This confirms he does still make an appearance in your town. It looks like he has his guitar in his hand too, and he may be sitting down. This might suggest that just like the old days, he plays music on Saturday nights outside for you. It may also be worth noting that he is located in front of the town hall building here. Number two, animals are busier and more animated than ever before. You might see them eating a popsicle, or even eating a donut. You may see them sweeping up the ground, lifting some weights, taking a nap, drinking a soda, or sipping some hot soup, and so much more. These animals feel alive, and that's pretty exciting. Number three, facial hair, believe it or not, actually appears in the game as a new feature, perhaps an accessory? As you can see, this dashing chap right here is sporting himself a nice fancy chin beard. Number four, your inventory space is upgradable now. When you first begin, you have 20 things that you can hold in your pocket, but as you progress, it seems you can upgrade to at least 40 spaces to store your items in. Number five, when you place your patterns into the game's world, they're definitely cleaner and smoother looking than ever before. There's definitely some kind of a smoothing technique going on here to make your pattern designs look cleaner and not pixelated like in previous games. This means using your own designs as a pathway or making your own clothing can look legitimately official. Number six, pine cones and acorns are new collectible materials in the game. They likely fall out of trees when you shake them. I mean, that makes sense, right? Number seven, there are many color variants when it comes to clothing in this game. The same pair of shoes, but in many different colors, for example. Number eight, you can place items pretty much anywhere on your island, even the large rock structures that surround your beach. Those can have objects on them as well, so I'm interested to see what people might do with those. Decorating the big rocks, might be kind of fun. Number nine, there are more varieties of seashells to collect. Oddly enough, if you look closely on the beach here, one of them is even colored blue. Number 10, when the fish shadows are swimming around in the water, and I kind of love this, you can actually see the water being displaced as they wiggle around. That's a pretty amazing detail. Number 11, it would appear that duplicates of the same type of fish can be found in your museum, and I think this goes for the insects as well. In this video, we can see two red snappers swimming in the same tank together. There are three butterfly fish in this tank too. This could mean that you can donate multiples of the same kind of fish, or it could just mean that perhaps when you donate one of them, the tank is just filled with a few of them. I mean, there's a gigantic school of fish swimming around here. There's like a hundred of these things, and I highly doubt that the player donated a hundred of these same kind of fish. So, I don't know, kind of kind of interesting. Number 12, there are several colors that your seaplane and airport can be themed around. We've seen a blue, a green, and a red so far. Number 13, actually, if we go back to the museum for a second, there's something kind of odd going on here. Did you notice that Blathers is apparently mixing the insects and the fish exhibits together? Uh, this room here has lots of bugs on display, but then there's a river flowing through the middle of the room, and it has fish swimming around in it. And again, there's two koi fish here, so... Either you can donate duplicates, or they just automatically put them in there so that it looks nicer. Number 14, on the back wall of the Able Sisters shop, we can see eight types of clothing hanging up. It's my assumption that this is showcasing the types of clothing you can place your patterns on. I'm really hoping to be wrong here, because this would mean there are only two new types of hats, and that's it. No making custom pattern shorts, no custom pattern pants, or, most importantly, no custom pattern shoes, which would be a huge bummer to me. There really wouldn't be any reason to display all eight of these things on the back wall, if not to show you what you can make. In the Japanese Direct, this footage was filmed from a different day, so there are different things to buy in the shop, but on the back wall, it all looks exactly the same. Adding more evidence to this is the fact that we see a player's patterns, and in their selection, you can see they have a pattern for almost every single one of these articles of clothing. It's not 100% confirmed, but there's definitely evidence to suggest that these are the only bits of clothing we can customize with our patterns. Let's hope making your own shorts, your own pants, your own socks, and your own shoes is something we see in a future update, if it's not already in the game. I'll hold off full judgment for now, and hope for the best, because otherwise, uh, a very important aspect of Animal Crossing, making your own clothing, has not really evolved in New Horizons. 
Number 15, the message in a bottle feature will return to New Horizons. They wash up on the shore of your beach. Number 16, there are likely many variants of tool designs in this game. For example, we've seen a wooden watering can, a toy-like watering can, and now you can even spot a watering can that looks like a little elephant. That's pretty adorable. Number 17, also worth mentioning in regards to tools, check out this fishing rod. It appears to have a little rubber ducky as a bobber. The rod itself also appears to maybe have that same kind of Fisher Price toy looking theme as one of the watering cans. So maybe that's like a whole theme going on here. Number 18, shooting down presents from the sky using your slingshot will make a return in this game. Number 19, you can display full dinosaur fossils outside on your island. Number 20, some of the wallpaper and flooring have impressive material shaders going on. Look at this shiny wall texture, for example. Number 21, the three animals shown in this birthday party are brand new designs for New Horizons. One is a sheep, the other one is a bear, and of course, the third one is a horse. Number 22, there are 10 designs for creating pathways on your island. You can see them all right here on this screen. You'll have to unlock them as you play, though. The 10th one is your very own patterns that you can use to make walkways with. Number 23, you can take your fruit and craft a door wreath out of them. That looks pretty delicious. Never wanted to eat a door before, but now I do. Number 24, speaking of a door wreath, I think my favorite one so far would definitely be this new seashell wreath. Number 25, it would appear that the beloved Halloween costumes from New Leaf might be making a return because we know for a fact that the skeleton mask is here in the game already, and the skeleton shirts and pants have been converted into being a full body suit now. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty excited about this one. Number 26, there definitely seems to be a way to leave transparent areas in the patterns that you create. I say this because if you look at the collections of patterns that this player has, a few of them clearly have transparency in their design. This could lead to a whole bunch of creative concepts. Number 27, by scanning amiibo figures and cards, you can now collect posters of the animals in your village and display them on your walls at home. Number 28, check it out. There's a new type of bridge scene here that looks to have a wooden log theme going on. I think this one is kind of cool. Number 29, Timmy and Tommy's shop appears to decorate for the season and holidays. This one's pretty big to me. Uh, here we can see that their shop has a Halloween theme to it with jack-o'-lanterns, spooky bat garland, and more. Alternatively, in the summertime, we see the same shop has tropical decor. We have a little lighthouse and seagull display in the window, a lifesaver raft, and some summery lanterns above the doorway. Uh, can I just say that this excites me pretty much beyond belief? <laughs> I love this! Number 30, if you decide that maybe you're not entirely happy with where you place your home, you can actually relocate to another spot on your island. Number 31, inside of the museum you can see a tree that appears to have slightly different leaves than the typical trees found in the game so far. In fact, if you look around, there are many new types of plants that appear in here, so they might just be exclusive to the museum, but maybe there are more types of plant life that you can decorate your island with eventually. Number 32, the cherry blossom petals will fall in the springtime, and they even gather in piles that you can pick up, just like the leaves do in the autumn season in the game. Number 33, when you first begin the game, you'll have the option to select one of four possible islands to fly off to. Number 34, if you're lucky, you may spot a colorful rainbow in the sky above your island. It looks kind of nice. Number 35, ah, I'm not sure if this is morbid or hilarious, M maybe it's both, but if you look closely in this winter scene, the guy character is wearing a fox-shaped scarf around his neck. Given the fact that this is Animal Crossing, that could get a little bit awkward when you talk to your neighbors. Number 36, did you know that there are actually many things you can craft with your island's fruit? You can make a pitcher of fruit water, a fruit basket, a coconut drink, and even a fruit wreath. There's a lot of stuff that you can actually do with the fruit in terms of crafting. It's not just for eating. Number 37, you can craft giant seashell furniture, including a sand dollar table and seashell seats, as well as this big shell divider. And yes, saying seashell seats is not easy. Number 38, New Horizons also has mushroom themed furniture, shroom tables, shroom chairs, and even shroom lamps. 
Number 39, Wisp can be found in your island at night sometimes, and when you speak to him, he gets scared and disappears. However, if you watch closely in this animation, you'll notice he actually breaks into five separate spirit orbs that appear to fly off in different directions. This could mean that it's like the GameCube title, where you'll have to search your island and collect all of the spirit orbs to get him to reappear for you, and then maybe do some kind of favor. Number 40, one of the new app icons we've seen on our Nook phone is the Nook Shopping app. This would suggest that you'll be able to order from a virtual catalog of goods no matter where you are. You don't even need to be in a shop. Number 41, you can send letters to animals on your island by grabbing these cute little postcards in the airport by the ocean. One of the interesting things here though is that some of the designs are only available for a limited amount of time, which I think is pretty cool, makes them even more special. Number 42, this red elephant under the tree is actually a brand new villager. We haven't seen him before, he looks kinda cool. Number 43, in the winter time at night, you can actually see the snow glistening and sparkling, just like in real life. Number 44, during the Christmas season, when there are lights on the pine trees, you can shake them and sometimes ornaments will fall out. We don't really know what they're used for yet, but I'm pretty excited to find out. The more holly jolly activities, uh, the better. Number 45, in this game, you get to decide where your fellow animal villagers will move to as well. You even get to pick the exact spot yourself. That way, you don't have to worry about them moving in on all your hard work. Number 46, many materials can be collected to craft things with in this game, but one of the new ones we recently discovered is this, uh, box of paint colors. I'm not sure what it's officially known as, but as you can see, you use these things uh, to change up the color of furniture. So that's kind of neat. Number 47, the new camera functionality is super cool and it has a lot of features. We knew you could add filters to your photos, but you can also zoom in and out and get a nice tight shot, or you can zoom out to see a lot of different things. You can change your perspective up and down, left and right, and you can even whistle so that all of the players and characters will look at the camera lens. I think that's pretty cute. Number 48, one of the new benefits from completing tasks in the Nook Mileage program is that you earn new titles for yourself on your passport. Here we can see a player unlocking Accomplished Lad and Lass. Uh, your Nook Miles can even be used to help pay off your debt to Tom Nook. So he doesn't even just need money, you can use other things to help pay off your crippling debt. Number 49, earning Nook Miles can get you loads of great rewards and upgrades. Some examples would be a whole bunch of Nook Incorporated specific merchandise, like shirts, hats, slippers, socks, and even a knapsack. There are even benefits like learning new hairstyles, pocket size upgrades, and extra stuff like the handy tool ring that gives you easier access to your tools. Number 50, if you look very closely, you can see a golden beam of light emitting from this crack in the ground. Animal Crossing veterans will remember this event would occur once a day in the GameCube title. When you dig it up, your prize would be a bag of bells. It's pretty cool to see that returning. Number 51, your fears will become a reality because we have confirmation that the scorpion and tarantula insects will return to New Horizons. They chase after you and try to bite you, uh, which is never a good thing, so catching them is a little tricky at night. Also worth noting, the tarantula is apparently coming out in the winter time, which they didn't do. They were a summer insect before, so oh boy, your fears will just constantly uh, follow you all year round, apparently. Number 52, if you get stung by wasps one time, they will mess up your face. But if you don't treat the wound and you get stung again, you'll pass out. So make sure to have some medicine handy if you plan on shaking a lot of trees. Number 53, if you're in a hurry to make your way to the top of your island, you can just pull out your new compact ladder and climb right up the side of a cliff. That's pretty handy. Number 54, you can make your room very dark so you can get some great atmospheric ambience. This player made a cozy little movie room. Number 55, this is pretty interesting. We all know by now that you can actually change up the shape of your landscape and even make rivers and ponds, but did you know that you can create small hills like the one seen behind these two characters? I'm so excited to see what kind of clever ideas people come up with for the shape of their island. Number 56, wishing on a star makes a return in New Horizons and it looks prettier than ever before. And if previous games are to go by, you might just get a little something sent in the mail from a special somebody. Number 57, here's another new bridge type that's been added to the game. It's got a kind of aqua colored steel look to it. Number 58, there are many ways to acquire new DIY recipe cards. One of them is by talking to animals. Here we get a first look at receiving a new DIY recipe from Rooney. 
Number 59, Mystery Seti makes a return in New Horizons, but this time he's got a totally different job. Uh, he's running a rescue service for the island. His helicopter even has a little mole face on it. Uh, should you find yourself unable to move forward for whatever reason, he will send out a rescue squad to pick you up via helicopter and then drop you off safely at your doorstep. See, he's, he's not all bad, right? He's helpful. Uh, number 60, animal interactions seem to be better than ever before. If you talk to them next to something of interest, they will then talk about that object and they even directly look at it as they're talking. Number 61, by using 2,000 of your Nook Mile points, you can print out a special ticket to fly off to a mysterious island to explore some uninhabited land. Here you can pick flowers and various other resources like fruit, uh, and it even seems like this might be a somewhat pricey event, so you'll have to use your miles wisely. Hopefully it's not something you can do all the time, that way it feels a little more special. Number 62, you can use the flowers that you pluck and put them in a vase to display. Number 63, when you're tired of tent living and you want to pay off your initial debt to Nook, you can start building an actual house for only 98,000 bells. Number 64, you can place items that are in your pockets into storage without having to walk up to a cabinet or a dresser. You do this by just selecting them in your pockets. Number 65, you can take a nice relaxing nap on hay bales. Turns out that these things are not chairs and instead they're more of a bed. Number 66, using the smartphone app, you can scan a QR code of a pattern to then use in your game on the Switch. These QR codes are from New Leaf or Happy Home Designer on the Nintendo 3DS. Oddly enough, uh, in the Direct, they didn't specifically mention that you'll be able to make QR codes for the patterns that you directly made in New Horizons, so let's hope you can, because the way they worded it, it sounds like this is only a feature for the 3DS games. Number 67, you can hang your shoes on the wall of your house. I seriously more or less do that in real life, so you can bet I'll be doing that in New Horizons. Number 68, you can now choose to display some flooring and wallpaper either vertically or horizontally, so you can kind of mix it up a bit. Number 69, using the smartphone app, you can also chat by using a digital keyboard on your phone. This will definitely make chatting in the game much faster. And of course, you can also use this app to voice chat with your friends as well. Number 70, your island can be up to three layers in height. This feature hasn't been implemented since the GameCube days. Number 71, as time moves on, Tom Nook will recruit more animals to come live on your island. Based on this footage, it would appear you might have the option to select who moves in based on three potential animals. It would then be your decision to choose one of them. Alternatively, I guess maybe three animals could move in at once, but I think that's a lot less likely. So it's kind of cool that you'll get to choose between three different animals. Gives you a little bit more freedom, but also doesn't give you too much freedom. Number 72, the tuna fish is much bigger in New Horizons compared to previous Animal Crossing games. I can only imagine what catching a shark is gonna look like now. Number 73, Orville and Wilbur are new Dodo characters that are named after the Wright brothers, who are of course the inventors of the world's first successful motor-operated airplane. Number 74, speaking of the Dodos, did you know that they sometimes speak in the NATO phonetic alphabet? So phrases like lifting off November Oscar Whisker might sound bizarre, but it would actually translate to lifting off now. Uh, this is pretty cute and clever, and frankly, it gives me a lot of confidence in the game's writing. I think this is going to be a pretty clever, funny game to read. Number 75, it's actually possible to make a little island within your island thanks to the new landscaping options. This means you would need a pole to get across to the little mini island. Nothing says comfy like a private island on your island. Number 76, you can drop and display your tools in your home or outdoors. Number 77, the front window of the Able Sisters shop will highlight a different clothing item on display every day. Number 78, when you decide to customize your house, you go to the town hall, and as you can see here, you even get some neat extra options, like viewing what the changes would look like in the day or at night. I kind of think that's a nice little touch. You can even view some curtains as well. Number 79, if you build a shop someplace and eventually decide, yeah, you don't really like where that shop is because you have other ideas, you can literally move your shops at any time. Number 80, LaBelle has apparently changed the way she spells her name. It used to be spelt L-A-B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, 
uh, and now it's L-A-B-E-L. <laughs> I just assume that maybe this is some kind of a fancy fashion designer thing where you change the way you spell your name. Oh, and as a bonus fact here, she does have a little ribbon tied around her suitcase. The fabric is clearly the iconic design of none other than Gracie Grace. Number 81, you can craft an ocarina instrument in the game, and believe it or not, you can literally play it and have your character hold it up to their face. Uh, this is kind of a change of pace from the way instruments used to work in the game, so I'm sure a lot of people will love this. Number 82, are you sad when your snow family melts away in the winter time and you gotta keep making them and watching them die every time? Well, good news, because this time around, you can build a snowman item that will always stay nice and frozen. Number 83, when you play locally with your friends on the same system, whatever fish, insects, or items you collect will be placed in the recycle bin at Nook's, or, you know, the town hall. When you later play by yourself, you can go in there and pick them up out of the recycle bin. Number 84, if you pay close attention, you'll notice inside of Nook's shop and the Able Sisters to the left side, you can see a door that could possibly lead into more areas to browse through. In Nook's Cranny, it's blocked off for now, but the Able Sisters have a door that you could seemingly approach and open easily. It's definitely suspicious that each of these main shops would have an area to the left side of the store that seems explorable. Number 85, inside of Nook's Cranny, they changed the way that you browse through some of the items. In the past, they would display these on a store shelf or on a counter, but now you open up a cabinet and a menu will pop up. These items would include flowers, saplings, tools, medicine, wallpaper, and flooring. Number 86, Isabel's role in New Horizons is very similar to what Pelly and Phyllis used to do at the town hall in past games. She can tell you what islanders think of the state of your town, she can change the town tune or the town flag, or even discuss a resident's behavior if maybe they're saying some naughty things. So it's definitely stuff that we should be familiar with if you played the previous games. Number 87, hey, good old Sahara, the traveling camel will make her appearance in this game, and based off of her text here, it would seem her role is just as it was in New Leaf, where she gives you rare flooring and wallpaper. However, if you read this a little more carefully, she specifically mentions rugs. Putting down a rug in your house was introduced in Happy Home Designer, and now it seems like you can do that in a mainline Animal Crossing game for the first time, thanks to Sahara. Number 88, uh, Daisy May is maybe the cutest dang new character in the game in my opinion. She's taking over the role of Joan and selling you white turnips every Sunday morning for random prices. You then of course play the stalk market to possibly earn some big bells. She might have some other options, but as of right now, we just know that she's basically Joan. Number 89, Kix will randomly visit your island and set up a little stand in front of the town hall center. We've seen him sell shoes and socks in the past at his own little shop, but now he offers a brand new accessory, the backpacks. I looked all over the Able Sister shop and even Nooks, and they don't seem to carry backpack items, so I'm willing to bet that Kix will be the place that you purchase them from. Number 90, there's a new magic wand tool that you can just give a little wiggle to, and it displays a bunch of clothing options around you. You select one of them, and then you'll magically transform your style. Uh, it appears to be given to you from Celeste somehow when she visits your island. Uh, can you only use it once a day? As much as you want? Are the clothing options that appear things that you already own, or are they styles that you don't even own? Well, we really don't know for sure, but it is a fact that there's some crazy star style magic going on in this wand, and frankly, I, I think I really want one. Number 91, CJ is a brand new beaver character that hosts fishing tourneys on your island. However, if you read the text bubble here, you'll notice it specifically says the spring fishing tourney. So this would definitely suggest that they don't occur as frequently as they did in like Wild World or City Folk, which often had them on the third Saturday of many months. In the GameCube game, they were held in June and November. So based on calling it the Spring Fishing Tourney, uh, it would seem that perhaps these are held every season. Not as often as some of the previous games. Number 92, Nintendo plans on sending out free updates to introduce new holiday events. The first free update will occur on launch day, and it will download the Bunny Day event that's related, of course, to Easter. Uh, it will feature everybody's favorite nightmare, Zipper T Bunny. Uh, while the update is downloaded in March, the actual Bunny Day event will not occur until April, which makes sense because it's meant to be a holiday. 
Number 93, the Nintendo Direct confirmed eight types of bridges and eight types of staircases that you can build on your island. Number 94, if you like wearing your t-shirts down to your knees, uh, you're in luck because in New Horizons, they've introduced some very long t-shirts. These can also have your own patterns applied to them as well. Number 95, there have been several new fossils shown off in videos. If you look at this museum scene, we can see a new one right down here. And then, brace yourself, because I'm pretty sure this is fossilized dinosaur droppings. So Animal Crossing may officially have some poop in it. Number 96, when you look through your Critterpedia app, you'll get more information for each fish and insect than ever before, including the months that you can catch them in, their current active hours on the island, and it will even tell you if you've donated them to the museum or not. And I think I speak on behalf of a lot of Animal Crossing fans when I say, that's gonna be super helpful. Number 97, until the Nintendo Direct, we hadn't really seen many new hairstyles for male characters, but now we have, and I gotta say, there are some pretty nice looking dudes on these dudes. Number 90, sorry, that was terrible. Number 98, this girl is wearing a freaking lion hat. Look at this. It's quite possible that this is a custom pattern too, as it's been confirmed that we can put patterns on this kind of a baseball cap now. Number 99, there are many types of fencing that you can use to bring your island together. You can create these by using a little mallet and connecting them together one section at a time. Number 100, Photopia is a small island. Photopia, is that it? Photopia? Photopia. What the hell? My pronunciation. <laughs> Why did I pronounce it that way? Number 100, Photo... Number one... <laughs> now I'm laughing at the fact that I said Photopia. Okay. Number 100, Photopia is a small island that Harvey the dog lives on. In his cabin, he runs a service that allows you to set up cute little scenes with furniture and animals that you scan in via the amiibo cards and figures, and then you get to take photographs of cute little scenes. The studio appears to be downstairs here, so it is possible that you can make up several rooms and then maybe save them or something, but Photopia is all about taking photos. I guess that's where it gets its name. And the number 101th fact is that there is a tombstone in the game, and it can be seen right up here. Many people think that this grave is Tortimer's. Some of them even think that it might be Wisp's grave. The truth is, the only thing buried under this tombstone is every other game that came before Animal Crossing New Horizons, because they're dead to me the moment I own Animal Crossing New Horizons. Whew! So that is gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. That is 101 facts about Animal Crossing New Horizons. At this point, I think I've made over like 300 of them at this channel, so be sure to check them out if you haven't already. And of course, come March 20th, I am going to be kicking off a really fun, crazy, wacky, detailed video journal series for the game itself, so I hope you'll join me for that. And until then, keep it locked right here to the BitBlock for a lot more news and coverage on Animal Crossing New Horizons.